Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hobart Bay Sports Network. I am your host Justin Winter, and today we're doing the very last game in the Nike Dome against the team we first faced in the Nike Dome, the Oregon Ducks, who are number 16, 5-2 so far. Doing pretty good on the run game, both offensively and defensively. That's why they've done so well overall. For us, it's our defense. They have Ted Hawley, and do not let these stats fool you. Not going to lie, these stats are pretty underwhelming. Maybe he had an injury, but he is said to be a potential first rounder in the NFL draft, so watch out. Welcome to Beaverton, Oregon, home of the Nike Dome, where both teams, Hobart Bay and Oregon, are doing their darndest to try to blend into the field. Hopefully you can see one of the players, at least by the helmet, those seem to be the only parts that aren't blending into the field. These two teams have opposing offensive strengths. Oregon is the running offense, Hobart Bay is the passing offense, and they have weaknesses on the other side. However, Oregon, a bit more balanced, but will Hobart Bay's top heavy approach get them the win? So far, Hobart Bay's only loss was that heartbreaker to Washington, and I don't think they plan on adding Oregon to the list of teams that beat them. So here we go from Beaverton, Hobart Bay kicking off, and we do have kickoff. And that one will sail through the uprights. No points for us, though. Second and five for Oregon. Getting a start on this game is Ted Hawley. Will keep for a first down for the Ducks. So no three and out to start for them. It's always preferable not starting on a three and out. But this time, he loses yards. A loss of three on a broken play. Caleb Bradshaw got some eating done there. And now it's third down and seven. And they will. Ted Holly goes, and that is caught by Sean Dennis. 33 yards down the field. What a great pass and catch. First and 10, Ted Holly to the left and almost intercepted. Timothy Paulson had cut that one off. He just dropped it. Second down and 10. Handoff. Neal has room, breaks the tackle, and he is gone! Touchdown, Ducks! Courtney Neal with an impressive touchdown run, and don't look past those linemen either. That was some great blocking. So let's go to a studio update now as UCLA tops number 22, Colorado. They advance to 8-1. and one. That essentially guarantees UCLA a spot in the tournament with eight wins, unless they absolutely implode. I don't see them not making it. Colorado, they need to win out if they want to get in, basically. Who knows? And here we go. Oregon kicking back to us for the first time, I guess. Randy Roberts taking it out of the end zone. He gets left, has room. He's got more than if he'd done a touchback. He gets taken out around the 40. Not bad. Second down and seven. Brett Stone will look to find someone. Now he rolls out. He has plenty of black in front of him, and he takes advantage of it, eventually going out of bounds for gain of 17. Hobart Bay loves the scramble game. That is their default, basically. There's a handoff to John Gordon, breaks the tackle, and fights ahead with a gain of 7. Despite the rushing stats, don't let it fool you, Hobart Bay's run game is actually really good. It's just that they don't run it nearly as much as other teams do, as that's caught by Brent Harris for 22 yards. And there's the exact same graphic that comes up every single stinking time Gail Snow goes in for a first play. John, John Gordon lost the football, and Tremblay of the Ducks picks it up. So Hobart Bay had something good going for them, and they give it back to Oregon. Now they're going to test their defense. Can they prevent going down by two scores? Well, so far it looks like a no. Bailey is going down the field and eventually chased down. He went from inside the 10 to all the way down near midfield. Oregon, they will hand off to Bailey again on a sweep, but he does not get anything. Loses two, actually. And now he looks like he's injured, so that... Really not a good play for the Ducks. Second and 12, Ted Hawley gets Sean Dennis. Sean Dennis fights and somehow gets the first down. He was putting on a running back stiff arm right there. 
Great play. Hand off now to Neal, and he gets nothing. He loses a yard, actually. Third down and five. Oregon's still going as fast as they can. Fakes the screen. Ted Hawley throws off his back foot, and that one is knocked away by David Nelson. So Hobart Bay, ooh, Oregon's going to try a field goal here. And I don't know where he thought those uprights were because that never had a shot. Randy Roberts on the return will just get tripped up by the shoelaces. It's a signature tackle for all opponents of Hobart Bay. Second down and five. Brett Stone will launch that one deep. And it's caught by Brett Harris. Brett Harris coming through big so far today. Another massive catch for him. That's the first completion by Brett Stone, by the way. Now we have Kale Snow back in. He will roll out. This is not conducive to good throwing, but it's caught by Bentley Zwiebel. Had to come back across the first down marker to get that one, but still. Hobart Bay with some momentum, trying not to fumble this drive away, but Oregon leads 7-0. Hobart Bay hasn't necessarily been one of those teams that usually puts the game out of reach in the first quarter. John Gordon first down. Last week was a bit of an exception against Washington State. Normally they're kind of low scoring until the fourth, in which case they just you know, beat the brakes off of everyone. Kale Snow, he's going to run for a first down, goes out of bounds before he gets clobbered. That is smart quarterback running. First down and goal, four yards to go. Starters back in, and off John Gordon. Easy touchdown for him, and we are going to be tied with the extra points. A very solid drive by Hobart Bay. Good response to the Oregon offense. Now second down and 11 for those Ducks. They will keep triple option, but Ted Holly exercises none and loses two. Third down and 13 upcoming for Oregon. They're still hurrying up to the line. That's weird. Ted Hawley will obviously throw, and he finds Sean Dennis. A sure target, but not nearly enough for the first down. Got half of that. Here we go. There's the punt, and now we got Randy Roberts back to return. He showed a spark last week, and now he's got some blocks right here. Across midfield, Randy Roberts down at about the 37. Great return, setting up Hobart Bay. Great field position. Brett Stone will take a sack to nullify that. Second down to 19, upcoming Josh Miller getting his first sack and first tackle of the game. Split backfield now, Randy Marquardt will be blocking on this run and that's a pretty good block as John Gordon with some shifty moves makes up all the yardage that Brett Stone lost. Or I guess you could say the O-line since they didn't really block for him. Third down to nine, Brett Stone will get no, Bentley's rebuild dropped it. It was tight coverage there. Can't really blame him for not holding on. Now we will send on our field goal kicker, Mike Holloway. This one from about 54 yards out, and it is good. So Mike Holloway actually knows where the uprights are as opposed to the Oregon kicker. Third down and three, four said Ducks. Only Ted Hawley in the backfield. He will go to the right, and that's caught and held onto by Junior Williams. Great catch. The Ducks, Ted Hawley rolling out. He throws, and that one is caught. Corey Holmes, despite them only having seven points, I've been fairly impressed by the Ducks' offense so far. And uh, I guess I might have to take that back. Loss of two. That said, even despite some of these bad losses. They've done pretty good jobs of getting down the field as Ted Hawley will unload and it is knocked away. Timothy Paulson dropping his second interception on the day. Last time it cost us seven. This time Oregon's kicker knows where the uprights are and he just barely gets the ball through. So both Oregon scores have come off of Timothy Paulson dropped interceptions. You're welcome Oregon. Randy Roberts takes this one out of the end zone again, going back to the left with some great blocks. He will not win the foot race, but still sets up his offense in great field position. Split backfield, hand off John Gordon. Why not? And he's picking up a first down. Powerful runner with great speed and not bad hands for catching the ball. He is 
quite underrated, I would say. First and 10, and Brett Stone will keep this one. Cuts inside, Met, not slide. We prefer it if you slide. Third down and three, handoff. John Gordon will, yes, he did get the first down. A little bit surprised by that one. Maybe I'm just blown. First down and 10, Kale Snow now in the game. He finds Ken Anderson on the right hand side. 12 yards, first down, his first catch of the game. Now under 30 seconds left, Brett Stone back in. He will look and he will find Ken Anderson, who gets clobbered just short of the goal line. So he gets two catches now, and we're just running down the clock here. Snap of 10 seconds, John Gordon on the edge, easy touchdown. Great blocks by the O-line, and Hobart Bay takes the lead back before halftime. Great drive, great way to end the half. Not really anything to complain about. It was very ex well executed, and that will end the first half. Oregon only down by seven. Will they be able to make something happen in the second half? Stay tuned. As I said before, the Oregon offense hasn't actually been that bad. They've done a pretty good job against us, getting a touchdown and a field goal only down by seven. That said, would those points be here if Timothy Paulson hadn't dropped those picks? If he got them both, we'd be looking at a 17-0 game at best for Oregon. So their offense has done well, but they've been bailed out a couple times. They need to fix that, work on it and see if they can actually come back, you know, ferocious in the second half. But Hobart Bay gets the ball first. Pistol formation, Brett Stone will hand off to Randy Marquardt. And I don't know if he thought he was getting that ball. No gain as Oregon forces a third and ten, perhaps a three and out to start off. That would be pretty good for them. Brett Stone rolling out. It's second nature at this point, and it's caught by John Gordon, who gets past the tackler, makes sort of a man miss. He got behind him, and then got dragged down, almost by the horse collar. Look at that, refs. Second down and 10. Kale Snow, a left-handed arm cannon, gets sacked. I was just about to say he bombs it deep, but then he got sacked by Anthony Simmons. So, now it's third down and seven, but Brett Stone is in the game. Will our blocking hold? It will. I guess he decided to run for it when he gets by. Not entirely sure what the decision-making process was there, but Oregon has the ball now, and Ted Hawley will keep with room, and he breaks a tackle. I told you, this guy is considered a potential first-round draft pick. Don't let his stats fool you. Sean Dennis will, oh my goodness. I saw that left side. If he takes that left side, he's gone. With the receiver speed, no, -uh, not catching him. Ted Hawley gets sacked and lost the ball. Cook picks it up and actually has a decent run for a lineman. Still a loss of six and still going to fourth down. But nonetheless, that was a good big guy moment. Second and eight, play action. Brett Stone rolling out, looking for someone. He will run with it himself. Oh, got some good blocks with some shifty moves. That's another thing about Hobart Bay. A lot of our guys are really shifty. They just run around people. And Brett Stone will keep pitch. Randy Marquard will get negative two yards. I feel bad for him today. He hasn't really gotten any good runs. Third down and six. Brett Stone rolling out. Why not? And plenty of black ahead of him. He will not slide down or go out of bounds. So I feel like Kale Snow is better about, you know, taking hits. Anyway, that ends the third quarter. No score change from the end of the first half. Will Hobart Bay hold on or will Oregon surge? Credit to the Ducks' defense to this point. Hobart Bay normally starts scoring a whole bunch in the second half, but the fourth quarter specifically is when they break it out. Let's see if the Ducks defense can hold up. They have a chance to stop Hobart Bay here. Probably still in Holloway field goal range. Doesn't matter, John Gordon gets the first down on a business run. Nonetheless, Oregon really does need to force a field goal attempt here. And off John Gordon, Hobart Bay seems to be content with that for this half, or at least this drive. Draining some clock, trying to 
make sure they seal the win as John Gordon, another run, another first down. And he's down before he reaches the 10 yard line, which means that they could get a first down without a touchdown. That could be big for time's sake. Second and five, it's a keeper for Brett Stone. He will get into the end zone for a touchdown. He almost didn't get there. And that may have even been preferable for Hobart Bay. Instead, they get the touchdown. They're gonna to go up by two scores, specifically two touchdowns. He got pancaked between a couple guys. Nonetheless, Brett Stone got in, and now Oregon needs to make something happen on offense. Ted Hawley will be chased down. Felix DeChambeau held him up for long enough for Timothy Paulson at all to catch up. And now Courtney Neal gets a terrible play call. Feel bad for those guys when they're handed the ball off there. Third and eight, Ted Hawley going for a screen pass caught by Junior Williams, who goes absolutely nowhere. Anything backwards. It's just too easy, and Oregon is going to punt. Very questionable decision at the very least. Randy Roberts is a good return man, but I'm not concerned about the return. Quite frankly, Hobart Bay might prefer having a shorter return, giving themselves more field. Well, now they're on the Oregon side of the field, and even if they don't get enough first downs, they can still kick a field goal, and with Hobart Bay kickers with strong legs, it's probably going to make it. Best case scenario for Oregon at this point is probably a three score deficit with just under two minutes left. Randy Marquardt finally gets a good carry and uh, Oregon hasn't used a timeout yet, but no doubt they will soon. Toss left, John Gordon on the edge, trying to stay in bounds. Good play there. And there's your first Oregon timeout. Third down and six, one timeout left for the Ducks. It is a keeper for Brett Stone. He will slide as he goes across the first down marker. That is enough. We hope our babe will just kill the clock from there. Final score, 24 to 10, an uncharacteristically low scoring game for Hobart Bay. Offense was not the main feature today. It was defense for sure. John Gordon averaging five yards a carry on 21 carries, two touchdowns and some good receiving yards to go along with it. Hobart Bay running backs, never underestimate them. Consistent 100 yard a game guys with some good receiving stats as well. I can't say that I that Oregon doesn't belong in the top 25. Quite frankly, I mean, they did so much better than Washington State did. Consider the last two games. Washington State, our offense had a field day. It was easy streak the entire game. Today, we only got 24. We got less than half of what we got last week. But our defense, our defense is pretty good. We're gonna recap this one in the post game show. You want to talk about absence of offense today? Both of our quarterbacks went 3 for 5, 1 for 91 yards, 1 for 42 yards, no touchdowns, and no picks. Both took a sack, so fairly identical performances. John Gordon was where it was at, 105 yards on the ground for him. Brett Stone even picked up 67 yards of his own and a touchdown. John Gordon got 2. Kale Snow got 12 yards. Receiving stats, obviously not much, but Brent Harris out of nowhere gets the most. John Gordon a 35 yard to Ken Anderson and Bentley Zwiebel got a single eight yard catch today. On the defensive side, Caleb Bradshaw and Noah Methuselah. However, Caleb Bradshaw got more solo tackles and an extra tackle for a loss. It was one sack on the day by Jonathan Stone. Defensively for Oregon, nine tackles for Nick Tremblay, none for loss though. Keith Cruz had a tackle for loss, two for Anthony Simmons, including a sack. On the receiving end for Oregon, they didn't have much production either. 54 yards for Sean Dennis, and uh, just not a lot. The ground game for them, however, was also not very good. They spread it out a bunch, and that's about it. Courtney Neal had the impressive rushing touchdown to start, but that was it. Ted Hawley went 8 for 11, he had more completions than anyone else, than our entire team combined actually, but only 101 yards, it's very little. 
Like I said, not an offensive game. We beat them in everything except turnovers, so that's pretty good. They had nine minutes of possession. Pretty lopsided. Anyway, next week we exit neutral sites and go to a true road game to Corvallis to face the Oregon State Beavers. I hope to see you there, but until then, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and have a nice day.